nine. Yes. So here it would be six divided by two is three. So I know this is gonna be y plus three squared. And then the second step is square that. Look at that, Jeff did something good. Oh crap, stupid. <coughs> So if it doesn't look like this, thankfully we have shown you the way to make it look like that. Yes? So we're going to square root everything. Hell no. Does it look like this? Yes. Yes. So now I can see everything. That's all right. Don't be joking like that. So center is 2, two negative 3. That's yeah, so 3. And the radius is 5. So you do the center, 2, negative 3, and you go 5 out, 5 out. Obviously I'm... I'm not going to do it, but it's pretty easy. Once you know where the center is and the radius, you just count the radius away from the center and then connect them up, you're done. It's awesome. It should be easy. Circles are easy. Ellipses, not as easy, but not crazy hard. It's like saying ellipses. Okay, yes? In a sense, though, you could just be like j plus j is the square root of 25, and that's the radius. Yeah, so when you said you're going to take the square root, to find the radius, you take the square root. Kick ass. If I made everything in the same format, this would be 5 squared. So that's why it's 5. All right, I like it. I like it. Okay, so let's do an ellipse. Let's see. Bam, bam, bam. Okay, okay. So circles look like this. All right. In fact, um, what was it? It was on the back of your grade sheet summary, right? The, if I remember correctly, do I have anybody's? thing here. <clears throat> yeah. Holy. I'm not going to, I just want to show you that it won't unzoom anymore. Unzoom, yo, stupid. Oh, that's somebody did this portable thing. Uh, circles up here at the top. There's the form of a circle. And then HK would be the center. The radius would be R. Right? The ellipses, they want to be in this form. So here the center is HK. And the radius is R. So the difference between this so, uh, and, and uh, if you, uh, we could have said circles look like this, and then they would look more like ellipses and, and actually hyperbolas too, but there was really no good reason. I wanted to preserve the Pythagorean theorem look to it, right? so we decided not to do that. Uh, it's a decision I actually agree with. So ellipses looks like that, x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals 1. We still need to talk about something called the foci. So, for example, when the planets orbit the sun, it's not a circular orbit. It's an elliptical orbit. So the sun is not at the center of a circle that we go around. The sun is actually at a focus so sometimes of the year we're closer to the sun, and other times of the year we're further away from the sun. I like it. Any junior astronomers out there know what I'm talking about? Sort of, not really. Okay. In case you didn't know, that's the way it is. It's not such a squat. It's not 
that far away from circular, but all the planets have slightly more elliptical or less elliptical orbits. It's kind of nif nifty, JF? Hey, sure. Um, <laughs> so, let me take that up. Let's stick with what we already have talked about, and then we'll talk about these foci and how to find them. So I, I still have a center that I need to figure out. But then, how far am I going to go in the x direction based off of this? Who remembers what we just talked about a minute ago? How far would it go in the x direction? Uh, Tell me exactly how far based on this equation. One. So when it was this, how far did I go? I can't remember which one was which, but... Three. And nine. Okay. Because nine is three squared. So how far am I going to go in the x direction? A. So I'm going to go A. In the, and so that would be like negative A. And in the y direction, I'm going to go B. Negative B. If that's zero, zero. Right? If that's not zero, zero, I still count the same amount. It's just the center moved. Yeah. It's not saying x2 over a2 plus etc. equals 1. It's saying that's how to figure out the ellipse. No. All right, so it's saying both at once. It is saying x squared over a squared plus y squared over b equals 1. That is a true, that's an equation. x and y and a and b all equal 1. The answers to this equation are the x's and y's that make this equation right. work. That would be a good But, but, so, depending on what A and B are, different points will make this equation work. So one, one point that would make this equation work would be the point A0. Can you guys see how that would make this equation work? If I plug A in here and a 0 in there, don't I get A squared over A squared, which is 1. It is not this point, A0. And the same thing could be 0B, right? That's, that's looking at it deeper than you actually have to. It's not as hard as all that. Okay, so let's do, this, let's do a concrete example. It's always nice to do a concrete example of an ellipse. We'll start with one that's in the right form. So, I mean, if this wasn't 1, the first thing you would do is make it 1, divide by whatever it is, right? So, to be in the right form, just like mx plus b is a form, when it's in that form, I see all this shit. So, if that's not 1, it's not the right form. Once I get in the right form, I see all this stuff. I, I know what it does. So, what I hate, what I try to capture on the handout is what the book says. It's really, really, really dumb. Uh... They switch the A and the B, and it makes it sound like that's all important. That ain't important. We're shit. Uh, how do I know? Well, what do I get from this? Yeah, it's yeah, and that tells me how far to go in what direction? Uh, uh, left and right. Yeah. yeah, the left and right, the x direction, right? Because it's with the freaking x. I don't care if I call it A or B. It's with the x. Shit. Right. Okay. So that means, uh, and what's the center going to be? Let's start there. What's the center? Zero, zero. And we, well, we're we going to go down to, we're going to go up and down, or let's say left and right. There you go, Jeff. Left and right by how much? You just told me. Four. 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 And I'm going to go up and down by how much? Three. Yeah, good. By square root of nine, three. That's because you square root six. Nine, square root, yeah, exactly. I like to make the other one. That would make the other one zero. Exactly. On the line and you figure out how I like it. So, uh, if I go to graph this thing, just have to make the x axis go out to four. The y can go out to three. So, the center is zero, zero. I go up and down three. Left and right four. Man, that was hard. It's more of an oval. Exactly. That's what an ellipse really is. It's an oval. It's the other name. So the center is always going to be zero, zero? No. Why was the center zero, zero here? Because it's not x minus two. And oh, okay. So the same thing that, you know, for an ellipse in general, uh, but I didn't like write it over and over and over. This can happen to any of these. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and then I just connected. Stewie Langdale, oh, this is 
Now that looks more like a circle, Jeff. Good job. Why does it look more like a circle? My scale was different in both directions, right? But it's all good. Let's talk about... Oh, that kind of sucks, though. Let me redraw that. I'm just not going to... Let me try and make the scales. I want it to look a little more elliptical. Make the scale the same. Do what you got to do, Jeff. We'll just sit here. All right, so now it's there, there, there. That looks a little bit... Did I go the right amount? Yes. Well, that's always a good thing, Jeff. All right. That looks more like... Stewy head. It's just been hit on this side. It's the uh, it's the Patriots football that they used. <laughs> oh, Jeff, let that die. Uh, I just want the Patriots to die. Um, so what I want to find it, for a circle, the fo the focus is the same as the center. The minute I start pulling it apart, the fo the fo uh, the center splits into the two puck pieces. So, uh, all right. And, and, and they kind of like, when the focus moves in, it makes this become skinnier and skinnier. So the further out the focus is, the skinnier that gets. So uh, uh, let's figure out where the focus is. And the way to find the focus, this looks very close to something we're used to. That's how you find the focus right there. C squared equals A squared minus B squared. So this is why they were careful with what they called A and B, but look, I, I hate that. Uh, in order for it not to become imaginary, C squared equals, which one of these goes first? 16, so that it doesn't become imaginary, right? I can't let the answer come out negative. Does that make sense? So it's always big minus small. So it'll be 16 minus 9. Six, C squared equals A squared minus B squared. So what's c squared equals 7. So the focus is? I saw c squared equals 7. Square root. Plus or minus. So it's plus or minus square root of 7. Square root of 7. Oh, yes, sir. C is the focus. So we'll talk about more. I'll show you an animation if I can find it real quick. What is? Say again. Totally. So c squared equals 16 minus 9, c squared equals 7, so c equals plus or minus rad 7. What's rad 7 roughly? 2.65. 2.65, I like it. So 2.7. So 2.7, 2.7. See, it's pushing it out. You guys, those are the two foci. So as the earth goes around the sun, the sun would be at one of the foci. That's how it really works. It's not the sun at the center, and we go in a circle. We actually go in an ellipse, and the sun is at one focus. So as we come around here, we start to accelerate. We go faster. Whee! And then we go, oh, shit. Whee! Oh, shit. Right? I want everybody on Earth to go, whee! <laughs> it just takes a few months to do this, so that would be hard to maintain. Whee! So whee! God damn. <laughs> Please, God. All right. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, let's see. What did I have? Oh, let's. Uh, what was that? What was I was gonna? Oh yeah, the animation. That's what I want. Let me see if I can find that real quick. Don't worry, I'll switch it over here when I find it. Leave the page. Go. Uh, oh crap! I didn't do that. I could just spell and make things so much easier. Oh, this will be all right. So the definition, I, I, I'm not going to take you through the derivation of the ellipse equation. Oh, my God. But the definition of a circle, for example, is it's a collection of all the points at the same distance away from the center. Right? Uh, if you want to know the definition for an ellipse, let me see if they give it to you here. Do they? Screw them. An ellipse is the set of all points that are, that the sum of the distances from these two foci are constant. Oh shit. So if I have one focus, I'm a circle, then it's kind of silly to say the sum of the distances is just one distance, the radius, and that stays constant. When I have two, I'm differently shaped, then I want 
that point is on the ellipse because the sum of these, the sum of those distances is constant. So if this distance gets bigger, this distance gets smaller, so the sum of them is a constant. That's the definition of an ellipse. Is it important for you to know that? No. Uh, it's actually more important for you to see this animation, which contains what I just said. Okay, let's start over. I wonder if there's any serious sound to this thing. Oh, shit. Sorry. I cranked it to 11. I don't want to. There's no sound anyway, so. So there's the foci, right? There's the foci. And the sum of those, well, that was exciting. <laughs> the sum of those distances has to remain the same. Oh, let me see. If I can find something better. Ellipse video. No, 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 no. Oh, here we go. Would that be good? No, that's going to be way too detailed. Screw it. Anyway. So that's what keeps it contained, though. If one distance gets bigger, the other one must get smaller, and that's why they get, they're contained then. So uh, whatever, so this point is this distance plus this distance. That is maintained the whole way. So as this distance gets bigger, this distance must get smaller. That's why it's contained. It's not allowed to just go crazy like a parabola can just go to infinity. This can't, it's contained because of the way it's defined. Does it have anything to do with how to actually do this? No. This is me explaining the backstory. Okay, all right, maybe, maybe, maybe. So let me, let me do this. Before we get into a hyperbolus, I'm gonna give you this. On one side is the practice test. Is this thing used for reflections? Reflections like Yes, exactly. Uh, Laser reflection. Normally you have parabolic. Um, uh, like like uh, uh, so, some kind of telescopes are mir are based off of mirrors. So you have these uh, parabolically shaped mirrors, so that as the light comes in, they get uh, reflected back through the focus. A parabola has a focus too, right? And you'll learn more about the parabola's focus in, in pre-calculus. But uh, a parabola has a focus. So the light comes in from a star from way far away. They all get focused here. So you have a big mirror in the back, and then you have the collector right there, you collector. And then this is hooked to a computer, and then you can display what it is you saw. What you're collecting, the bigger this is, the more light you're collecting, so the better you can see something. And of course, you know, like there's one in Hawaii on one of the mountains, Mount uh, something. Mount big island. Yes, you know, talking about the big... Well, the reason they have it out there is because there's no outside interference. It's out there in the middle of the ocean. Yeah. So there's no light. The biggest nightmare for any astronomer is to be stuck in a place where there's a lot of light pollution, right? Because you get a lot of light pollution, you can't see the stars as well. If you've ever been out it's away, bad. like in Wyoming, off a cliff edge or something, maybe not off a cliff edge, at night. It's a little, uh, <laughs> has anybody ever seen like the sky without any light around? And it's just insane how there's almost no part of it that doesn't have a star on it. It's like... You know, you live in the city, and you're like, all right, there's a star, there's a star. You go to the country, like, uh, oh, shit. <laughs> I am ins insignificant. Yes, this is true. Uh, it's a little scary. You have to go somewhere and lie down and hope yourself. But you'll be right. <laughs> uh, uh, all right. So on one side is the practice test. On the other side, I want you to do number one and number three, because number two is a hyperbola. We haven't talked about that yet, but I don't want to get into that yet. If you want to, you can group up and try to do these two problems. Thank you.
Number one and number three. One and three. You can't do two yet. Scheiße. 